<laughs> I've had enough of this place. <laughs> this house sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I said it five times. <laughs> You, I hate this. You can't dude. retire from this. You're not vested yet. Well, <laughs> I'll make more in unemployment anyway. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and with that, welcome to the Washdown Podcast. I am the producer, somehow allowed to be on camera today, James Moran. With me is my somewhat okay friend, Chris Nelson. We're not friends. Yeah, okay, basically not friends. And then uh, behind the camera today, because he got some plastic surgery, just isn't looking that well. <laughs> Mr. Jeremy Green. <laughs> well, this today is our guest, Ashley. How are you today, my dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, take a minute and tell us about yourself. Give us the uh, the Ashley report. Um. Well, I am a single mom of a lot of kids. I run a small zoo. I've been a police officer for three years at my current department. I was at another department before. Um, for a little bit. I have a twin sister who's a firefighter and my dad is on the fire department. And yeah, so I have no free time. Pretty much when you came out of the womb, they were just like public service. And yes. You and <laughs> yep. <you on. laughs> yep. That's, that's my role <laughs> in the family. So with our police department here, um, what do you do? Do you, are you in a certain unit? Are you in the patrol bureau? Where do you I, do? I patrol on okay. the streets. Um, I'm guessing you're probably in the inner city, kind of where you're at. Yep. Okay. Um, so just kind of take us into what it's like being a police officer, at least in, in the past year, if not the past even three years since you've been on. What is the culture that you have found out that's going on in the streets right now versus why you wanted to come onto the job? Well, I wanted to get into the job so I didn't originally want to be a police officer. I actually wanted to be a firefighter. Um, I tested with them, got on a class list, um, but then I had the opportunity to go to the police academy before I was going to be in a fire academy. So I was like, whatever, I'll do that first, because <laughs> my dad was also a police officer. So I was a federal agent too at one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember talking about that. <laughs> and Marshall for a little bit. Yeah, your dad straight up wears <laughs> the cape of the American flag. He's done it all. Oh yeah, yeah. Still, still military. military yep. Still in the military. <laughs> yep, uh, which is what I admire most about him. He's such a hard worker. Um, so I went into the police academy and I loved it from day one. I was like, this is what I want to do. This is where I'm supposed to be screw dragging a hose. I, I want to drive fast and do all the things. We drive fast. Well, I know you do, but. I, Our vehicles are better too. Yeah. Just okay. Saying. All right. All right. You're not Just wrong. Don't, all right. Don't come for me. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. We have a Just because our fleet. cars have like 300,000 miles, that doesn't mean anything. All right. They get guns though. I, I'm jealous about that. Yeah, but their cars also get Molotov cocktail. True. We'll get to that. True. Our, ours had bricks and rocks. Oh, true. Minor repairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I graduated the police academy in 2016. I went to a department that my dad used to work for. Um, took me a week to realize that that was not the place for me. Um, it was a very small agency with a lot of people, older men particularly, who still have the idea that this is a man's job and there's no spot for women. Um, so they made me feel small and very unwelcome, and they told me pretty much every day that I wasn't going to make it. So I resigned from there, and they told me that I should go to a smaller department, and I went to the biggest department <laughs> in the area, and I said, screw you, respectfully, to the major. Um and so in 2018, I graduated from my second police academy, and I've been with my department now for three years. Uh, when I started, it was fine. I was kind of naive. I grew up in a small town, so there was a lot of things that I didn't know, um, a lot of just different people that I had never experienced before. So... Um, and I would say three years ago, things were a lot different in the realm of hating police than they are now. 
So did a lot of cool things, uh, made a lot of friends with the people in my area. And then the news, you know, made it their mission to post everything bad about police. That's their narrative now. Um, But I haven't let that, I don't know, deter me. It hasn't, it hasn't bothered me really. How has it changed your daily interactions with the community that you serve? Not the Um, big thing, just the run of the mill traffic stop or pedestrian check. How is that? I do them less. If I, if I'm being honest, I, I'm a de-escalator by nature. Um, I'm very outgoing, very friendly, you know, just a, a bat of the eyelashes and some sweet talking. Um, but I believe that in the current climate, you really, really have to pick your battles. Um, so I don't, I'm not just going to stop a car just to stop it because, you know, it's got a cracked mirror or a brake light out um, just because there is never a time that you will know how these interactions are going to end. Um, so I, I just do them less. I'm so still the same. It kind of sounds like because of what the, what the media's portrayed and what people, the protests and all of that, that you're not able to do your job as effectively than before. Um, That's kind of the way it sounds. Cause those, sometimes those, I understand the stops, but people get mad immediately and they yeah. escalate it immediately. Yeah. <clears throat> Even, I don't know, it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Yeah. Well, I feel like, too, we've we've seen the result of that. when, f- From an outsider looking in, obviously, in the law enforcement, we've seen our officers time and time have their hands tied, per se, and we've seen the spikes in violent crime. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and it's it, I feel <laughs> bad yes. for them. It, Some, sometimes those, those little traffic stops there, you find somebody who's got that violent warrant, T- out for Timothy McVeigh's arrest led by just a simple traffic stop. Yeah. But, you know, you know something like that, where it's mm-hmm. something minor, but it's still an infraction. Even though I'm not big on the whole tail light out because yeah, I didn't know, or I'm or gonna get to it. Out. You know, <laughs> or it's been out for six months. But that's not my problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but still, I mean, it, is, is it annoying bowl? to get pulled over? Absolutely, it's annoying to get pulled over. But it is what it is. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a law. It's it's still a law. It's part of the the, the driving. Um, Help me out. The rules and regulations. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to have your all it's your part of working. the. It's part of the fabric of society that, that bounds us, to, binds us together. Because a society without laws, I yeah, mean, is a disaster. We're going yeah. Mad Max. Yeah. Deal. So I, I have. I get the guy <laughs> with the thong and the face mask. <laughs> well, I, I want the dude on the little like big pole vault thing that goes up and down <laughs> and then throws. We're the gonna make Jeremy the, the guitar cars. guy. Deal. <laughs> Yeah. We're shaving your head. Okay, no. No. (laughs) Yeah, you're sharply staring. That's a no for me. (laughs) That's a no for me. But Um, but yeah, when you when you do those things, even though they they are they seem like an inconvenience or a minor infraction, it can lead to that getting that dangerous person off the street. Yeah. And if you're doing it less, that means there's more dangerous people, but it's dangerous more dangerous for you now than it used to be. Yeah. As officers. Yeah. I I mean I now when I look at policing, so do I think that policing needed a change from like 1950? Yes. Cause there was a lot of things being done that weren't right, you know, but we've gone from this end of policing to this end of policing. And we are so far away from policing. Like I said, it's like a double edged sword. We, we are still allowed to do our jobs, but it's hard to do them because everything is like so scrutinized for mm-hmm. us. You well, know? and I mean, I can't speak for your department, but you know, just what you see on the mainstream media or whatever from day to day is of officers getting in trouble for basically doing their job mm-hmm. and their leadership does not have their back. They're not like standing up and saying, no, this was the right thing. Everything. Well, we're going to do an investigation or we're going to do that. I mean, how does that, and I don't want you to speak for anybody else or whatever, but you know, how has that affected morale or has it affected morale with your department? Um, I, I would say, yeah, you guys have it a has. pretty kick-ass chief though. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I love our chief. Um, 
I wouldn't say it's affected morale like a ton. I mean, there are being in a like a male dominated field, you know, this is what they live for. The guns, the drugs, the the stops, the chases, the fights, you know. So I've just seen a lot of them like take a step back and not seem to enjoy themselves as much, but I mean, we're all still really close and together and you know. One one thing for me, huge pet peeve of mine is I hate being called something I'm not. Like I get called fat a lot and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> but I Wait, is, that, is that not accurate? I mean what? How is that not something that you are? I know, and I, I just don't like to hear it. Okay, but it's something that you are just because you don't I'm like to hear it. I'm hefty. <laughs> you're fluffy. Fluff, thank you. Fluffy. Actually, I, I'm fluffy. You're Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I like man. <laughs> <laughs> I might have watched that last night because I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I hate you guys so much. <laughs> so much. I want to okay, go back okay, to the So, so, so reframe, your, reframe your statement. I hate. Reframe being, your statement. Ah, I hate being called something I'm not. And there's a lot of times, I'm, even by the public, you are a white officer mm-hmm. and a mom of five biracial children. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact, because I saw it with my own eyes last year during some of the riots and protests that happened all over the city. Yeah. Many of my officer, friends that were officers, some even <laughs> that were black, still trying to figure that one out, be called racists and bigots and hating those of color <laughs> how do you do it they don't know me <laughs> sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me it's a phrase that i seriously live by you have to care about someone well i do to care about their opinion you can call me anything you want you don't you don't know me you are their goal is to say things to hurt your feelings to make you agitated to get you to act out of character um you don't. You can call me racist. That's fine. You don't know me. You don't know that I have five biracial kids at home. You don't know. It just doesn't bother me. I don't. I don't sleep any less being like, well, Elizabeth at the protest said I was racist, and I'm not racist. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I. I just don't care. I, I, <laughs> I just don't care at all, personally. I, I don't know how you do it. I. I just. But I mean, I. I think it speaks to the professionalism and the mindset needed for your job though well i mean uh, one of our rules is our peace cannot be disturbed you know so i just try my hardest i mean we're all human we all have emotions we all have a breaking point at some point but i try my hardest to go in with a smile and not let my peace be disturbed fair enough (laughs) yeah about all you can do yeah (laughs) fake it till you make it what did you see kind of the toll those riots and protests last summer took on some of the other officers? The ones that had the urine thrown in their face or the rocks or the frozen water bottles thrown at them? And- well, it was very annoying. I got hit with a water bottle in my head. And I just was so thankful that I was wearing my helmet. Because first of all, when you're walking around in that helmet, you already feel like you're doing this number because it's so heavy. And I'm walking in and I'm like got my game face on. I was like, I'm just going to stand here and I'm just pay, looking straight ahead, not paying attention to anything else. And then boom, I was like, Oh my God, I was like, that was so rude. I'm like, who did that? You know, but I was just like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just go do what you're supposed to do. You know? So it sucks. Uh, it was very annoying, but my thing is, it's like, Protesting is one thing, but why why should there be no punishment for breaking the law in any way? You guys are blocking the street. Okay, well, you can't do that. That's fine that you want to protest. You could just be standing there not saying a thing with your signs. You can't block the street. Any other person outside of a protest would get, you know, we'd try to get them out of the street, and then you'd be arrested. I mean... It, the streets for driving, for cars. You don't say. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, the grass, the park, the sidewalk. Go stand, go stand there. So it was really frustrating, and then like having to just take it. That's that's the part that like 
I think annoyed everybody the most is just standing there being a punching bag just berated for the public, you know, uh, I was told several times, you know, you should just quit. I bet you're sexually harassed every single day. You should write a book on it and quit. Okay. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> and Make no <that> money. <laughs> right. You know? And so it's just, where did your riches come from? Well, some Karen in a protest one time told me I should write a book, and by God, here I am. Did you see yeah. the cop that mocked LeBron James? Yeah. You see that? You know, he got suspended, right? Yeah. He got a book deal. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I, it's, yeah. My wife beat me down and talked me into getting TikTok. And mm-hmm. I just it's terrible. It, it is. It's, it's addicting. Yeah. I hate it. I'm going to delete it. We've been talking about making a TikTok for like a year now. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good thing we have it because once we start, it's just, just going to go all down yeah. from there. But yeah, but yeah but he, got, he got a book deal out of it. Mm-hmm. Crazy for one 30 second video. I mean, it was funny. Get me wrong. I laughed. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too is like that, that same lady who told me, um, you should quit and write a book. I had two black officers standing next to me and she told them both the same thing. You guys are black. You shouldn't be doing this. You should quit and write a book on all the injustice of the police department. Um, and so I asked her, I said, respectfully, if you want me to quit, because I'm a female, and you want them to quit because they're black, um, but you guys notoriously hate the white male cops. Who, who did you want to do the job? Deer in headlights. <laughs> and, she's, and then she suggested community policing. Okay, so you want to take people out of the community with notably one of the highest violent crime rates, and you want... who who. Who gets to decide who pleases? You know? Does that, does that, I'll be <laughs> let you think that one out because that's just, that's ludicrous. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very crazy idea. Um, and she really didn't have anything to say after that. You know, everyone wants to Monday morning quarterback. Well, you should have done this, should have done this, should have done this. And, oh, we need to get better police officers, more training, blah, blah, blah. I mean, but it. they want to cut your funding. Yeah. So how yeah, you, you don't get you training? don't get training without funding. Yeah. I, I feel like you guys watching the news's opinion on law enforcement interactions is a lot like me watching Chicago Fire. I watch it and I'm like, that's not how any of this goes. Well, I don't I don't watch the news. Like, like, like the, why do you do, watch Chicago Fire? You don't do that. I, that's why I stopped watching it. I, I got so annoyed. I'm like, that doesn't happen. Yeah. But then I watch Chicago PD and I'm like, that's so cool. No, he did good well. But that's probably not how that Man. happens either. But if you don't know. Blue Bloods yeah. and Law and oh, Order, the only two you got to watch. But it's one of those things, if you don't know, or if mm-hmm. you're ignorant to how things work, it's easy to think something is right or should have been done differently when, yeah. when you don't have the experience to back that Yes, up. and the problem is, is no one takes the time to go figure out how it works. Oh, it's easy not, to not, say something from a chair in an office. Yes, and, come do a ride along. And even then, I would, I would venture to say that... 10 hours in the passenger seat is nothing compared to doing the job 10 hours a day, five days a week. You know, you don't get the same amount of like situational awareness and heightened senses and that gut feeling when you know just something isn't right, you know, but everyone wants to complain, complain, complain and beg for a change, but no one has a solution and no one wants to be the change. If you don't think that I should do this job, then you come do this job. I think oh, right, you don't want right to do this are, job? Right alongs are a good start, I think. Yeah. But, like, we had a dispatcher ride with us when I was at a different station, a busy station. And we all slept all night, which was unheard of there. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. The ride, curse of the ride along. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nothing really, cool happens. So, you know, because when you're used to running all night, you end up waking up, and now you're, you're up. So I get up, walk around, and there's three other ambulances sitting outside. I'm like, really? Hmm, what are those doing here that <laughs> yeah, were never yeah. here before? You know? But yeah. I think some of that – I saw a video of a – I don't remember who he was. He was an activist, and it was another different city. And he was talking about the whole – the police shootings, you know, the shoot, don't shoot. So they sent him through a training, and he went through three obstacles. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. And he ended up shooting two of the three people. The first one, he didn't shoot, and he got killed. Mm-hmm. The other two, he shot. And then they questioned him, why'd you shoot? He's like, well, I only had a split second. And I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. you, don't, you don't say. <laughs> and yeah. it appeared to be. I'm like, that's, you know, you know being, a, being a cop's not easy. Yeah. I'll be honest. I mean, how many times do we get questioned on things we do yeah. on our side? And we're blessed. Not, and not that this is abused by any means, but like we are blessed for now 
that our interactions are not such heavily scrutinized or recorded. They will be. Yeah, it, it's a matter of time. We know we had we had an interaction just yesterday. Some guy wrecked his car, and you know went up to a went into an embankment and was high on PCP. Smelled it as soon as he opened the door, and he just started getting belligerent with us. Started getting combative. Well, we still had to get him out of the car, and his driver's side door was pinned up against a metal barricade. So he, since he wasn't coming out under his own <laughs> choice, he got pulled out the passenger side and cars were damn near at a stop mm-hmm. just to record it because they're like well, look at these three white officers pulling this black man out of a car and yeah. you know and luckily we all had the wherewithal and we kind of stood around but it just it was someone was looking for the next viral 15 yes. second phone video yes before you don't get without you, you get a fraction of a story yes. yeah just like yeah. with anything we see on the news you take that with a grain of a lot of salt <laughs> and you start you dig in a little bit Mm-hmm. You know, what really happened? What what led to it? What happened that 15 seconds before, 30 seconds before, you know? Yeah. Oh, you mean you're supposed to look at context? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I don't it's watch crazy. the news. It's, I, well, and the, here's the thing that everybody it. needs to remember is that mainstream media, per se, isn't the news anymore. They are giant corporations who have their own agenda. Mm-hmm. And they're going to push out whatever narrative fits their agenda whatever gets some views exactly and if the american public would take a step back and go hmm use that thing on their shoulders instead of a hat rack use their brain i think a lot of the problems that we're having right now could be at least mitigated somewhat mm-hmm. this was simple understanding yeah mm-hmm. but they want to paint so like the case with the police officers they want to paint them all with the same brush yep you wear a badge you're bad that's just not the case of all of the police interactions and i was watching a deal on this the other day there's over so many millions of interactions that police have with the public that go just every fine. year that that are just fine that mm-hmm. are hey how's your day going you know here's your ticket or you know they stop to help a motorist or whatever it may be Perfectly benign. The one time that something goes wrong, and then all of a sudden, well, they're all bad. Mm-hmm. And you see, and you see, even like, I, f- I feel bad for the media units of police departments because there's so many great. Your story. I mean, your your story. What was it? Two years ago, went viral. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about that a little bit? Um. So I'm, I'm a giver by nature. Um, I do things. You're a mom. I'm a mom. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I get a great joy out of making people happy. Um, it makes me smile. So I was sent to a shooting, and I came in contact with a young boy who had actually witnessed it. It was a homicide um, from his apartment window. And so we brought him out and he was anxious to talk to us really wanted to be like a cop when he was older super excited um and so I was kind of talking to him about it and he's like yeah well I was gonna go out and ride my bike and I came outside and saw that my bike was stolen so I couldn't so then I was forced to be inside which ultimately is what led him to witnessing the homicide so um I was like, wow. So I kind of asked him what kind of bike he had and all this stuff. And the next day I told my old partner, I was like, hey, we have an errand to run. And I went and I bought the kid a new bike. Um, and he cried. Like it was it was awesome, you know. But, yeah, it, it did go viral. But I, I love doing things like that for people. <laughs> it, was, it, was, no, it was a big deal. It was a huge deal. <laughs> well, but no, but see, the thing is, is like, I didn't really understand why it was a big deal because there are officers who do stuff like this all the time. We're just so inundated by the negative that when we finally see something positive. Yeah. And then everyone makes a big deal about it. You know, they're like, Oh my gosh, like a police officer did something nice for a kid. I I couldn't tell you the white one. I couldn't (laughs) couldn't tell you (laughs) the amount of my own money I've spent doing things for people at work. You know, I, I got sent to um, a disturbance one time 
and it was a non-pay, which is a civil issue. She got a Zeke trip, and she paid him $20. He took her to a spot and said, this is where your money gets you, and she didn't like that. She was outraged, and she's like, it was supposed to get me here, and she wanted a refund. So I said, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I, I understand your frustration, but unfortunately, this is not something, like, there's not a crime here. And so then we were automatically racist, um, and she was mother effing us up and down. What are we good for? We're supposed to protect and serve, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm a single mom. That was $20. Like, I don't just have all this money to be giving out. You know, she's like, I was trying to go do my laundry. And I was like, I understand. So I walked to the car and my partner thought we were leaving. He gets in and I pull out my wallet because I literally, I knew I had like $19 in cash on me. Um, and he was like, you are not. And I was like, no, I am. I was like, I understand where she's coming from. She's not expressing it very well, but I understand, you know, like I've, I'm a single mom and I, I would be angry too. It's not, it's $20, you know, for me. I'm, I'm blessed enough to have it. So I walk up to her and as I'm walking up, a bystander comes out with her phone, you know, and she's like, uh, I said, hello, can I help you? And she's like, no, I'm just making sure this black woman is okay. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. I was like, <clears throat> I'll have you know her problem is not with us, but okay, you're free to stand there and record, whatever. So I walk up to her and she's still cussing at me and I was like, ma'am, you know, I, I want you to know that I I was going to I was gonna get you your money. Hey, give me my money then, bitch. <laughs> like <sighs> you know, as I'm holding my own money in my hand and I was like Okay. She's like, give it to me. And I put it in my pocket because for a moment I had a, you know, I was having a moment. A I was a like, human <laughs> yeah, I was you, like human you know reaction. what? I said, I, I said, this is my own money and I was going to give it to you because I understand where you're coming from. Then fucking give me the money. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, took a deep breath. And I had this mental talk with myself and I'm like, this is what, this is what people expect, you know? And I was like, you were going to do something nice. Don't let a negative reaction prevent you from doing something nice. Cause then it's just a downhill from there. Then you quit doing things just because people aren't appreciative and I wasn't doing it for her to be appreciative. I was doing it because I wanted to help. So I took the money out of my pocket and I said, here you go. I, you know, and she was like, thank you, bitch. Thank you. So I said, okay, and I just let her go. But, you know, I was glad that I did it at the end of the day because I just, I, I don't want to be, I don't want the negativity of this job to take away from who I am as a person, you know? Do you think, we, we kind of came on about the same time. We were both pretty new together. I can speak for my career, but I can't speak for yours. Is it sustainable? Is what's going on right now in your day to day interactions and continual things like that on your own mental health with is, is that sustainable? Um Yeah. I mean for right now, yeah. I, I've noticed with personally with like dealing with angry people all the time. And they're not all angry, but we have a lot of negative interactions, just people hating us. Um I've noticed myself getting more angry just in general, like at home, I've just noticed like I'm just quicker to get frustrated, things like that. So I've, I've definitely noticed over the years, the toll that it's taken on me. Um, but I love my job and I think that there will always be people who hate us always. Um, but not everybody hates us. And you got to remind yourself that when you're just like living with a cloud, you know, there is, there is some sunshine. Yeah, well, I would say, you know, you're three years in, right? Mm -hmm. And you're already noticing yourself getting short at home and angry at off hours and all of that stuff. I would definitely encourage you to 
pay attention to that Mm -hmm. because I can tell you where that goes. Yeah. And it's, it's an almost imperceptible slide if you're not paying attention until, you know, it's really late to recognize it. Yeah. And the, the thing that you need to remember is your job will suffer last Mm -hmm. because you love your job Mm -hmm. and you want to be there and you want to do good. Everything else is going to suffer. Yeah. So I would encourage you to, to pay attention to that. And I'm not saying you, Oh, you need to go see a therapist once a week or well, anybody like, in our yeah. field should. <laughs> but, I, there is no, yeah. there is not one person who would not benefit from seeing yeah. a therapist weekly. Probably. But, <laughs> yeah. Take, take your mental health seriously. And yeah. if you're, and it's a good thing you're already recognizing those signs and you know about them. Yeah. So yeah, I'd just say pay but, attention but if you're because already, if you're already seeing it though. You're already a little bit behind. Yeah. yeah. So you got you got, you got to play a little catch up to get ahead of it, stay ahead of it. Otherwise, right. yeah. <clears throat> but you have your job is going to suffer. The nice thing too, knowing knowing your family like we all do, you have that network around you. Yeah. You know those that you can tag to check out for a little bit, or or can keep you accountable too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's yeah, that's always sure. a plus. Absolutely. But I just I don't know how you do it. <laughs> 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 I would put that twenty dollars back in my pocket <laughs> so fast. Yep. Like all right. How to throw the storm drain right in front of her. I'm like, well, now nobody gets it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and like I said, that's that's what that's what they would have expected, you know. So I just well, and that's got to be hard too, of always dealing with people who have that entitlement mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's one of those things. Like, where does it come from? Like, we don't have, you know, your police department's very busy. We don't have time to do two hour let's dig deep into your past and figure out where that came from so you don't have the luxury of really trying like maybe an hour later it did click for her when she was able to spend that twenty dollars on something she needed maybe it didn't maybe it might in a year who knows but it's it's one of those like you gotta invest in it Mm -hmm. you know it's it's the behavior you do today that you may not see an immediate benefit from it whether it be a compliant arrest or a smile on the face or even a thank you Mm mm-hmm but if that step isn't taken, you can guarantee it's not going to get any better down the road. Yeah. At least here there's hope with it. Yeah. Planting the seeds per se. Yeah. Well, and I think the thing after that call that like probably weighed most heavy on my mind was the white bystander who was, you know, making sure she was safe from me, uh, offered to give her a ride. And she was like, yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like I just didn't feel safe. So I appreciate that. And then I was like, dang, you know, what's crazy is like, she's going to let people know what this nice white person did for her, but not what this white person did for her just because I'm in a uniform, you know? And it was just crazy. I'm like, well, it kind of seems like today that if you wear a uniform, you're an automatic bunch of egg. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stand up for yourself. You can't say anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Yeah. Well, I even get it too, like on calls and, and we've had them, you know, we get these just terrible patients <laughs> they are just mean and you know especially I, I i see it more with those of african americans and more like hispanics or asians or anything else but they look at they look at race as like an authority thing and you know it'll be me and a white officer trying to restrain this combative patient they'll look at me like hey why are you doing this man you're supposed to be on my side <laughs> what because i'm black what is that why man you a brother you ain't supposed to let this happen well, you shouldn't have punched her and kicked me. Like, I don't know. What to t- this is the consequences bus rolling now, but I don't know what to tell you. But it's just so like. <laughs> Consequence bus? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take I'll I, over I, train. I, I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to start calling the wagon the consequence bus. Well, I call the ambulance that all the time. Like, anytime, like, you know, meet PD on the scene of an overdose or something like that. And they're like, yeah, he's drunk. I'm like, yeah, hey, but on the consequence bus. Let's go. <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't want to go to the hospital. Too bad. I just, I want to know why anytime something doesn't go somebody's way, I'm automatically a racist. Because that's the go-to nowadays. You know? That's, that's the that's the. Button. You can't help me. You're racist. It's, I'll tell you this. It's the same ignorance, ignorance, simply not knowing any better, that I saw growing up. Because I, too, got a lot of, man. You're like the coolest black person we know. You're like the coolest white person. You know, you're the whitest black person we know. <laughs> no, bro, I'm just the only black dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's it's that same ignorance. It just it just takes a different form. But, you know, like, 
oh, well, you're a racist because you're a cop. No, I'm just, I'm just a cop. Mm-hmm. Like the only cop you know was kind of a bad one. So yeah, <laughs> and it's just it it's hard to break that. Sometimes it's it's, it's simply it is just simple innocent ignorance. They don't know any better. You know where I grew up, and it's a small white town. I was the only black person to graduate from my high school at the time, and they, this, the interaction that we get in the metropolitan area isn't there. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it's it's not it's not their fault. It's how they were raised. Mm-hmm. They're all nice. You know, and I see the same time, same a lot, you know, in the inner city, like, that's how they were raised. Yeah, maybe their grandparents had some terrible interactions with law enforcement. That, mm-hmm. that is true. But yeah. if they're just raised that way and they don't know any better, I, on one hand, I can't fault them for their mindset. I'll fault them for how they behave, mm-hmm. but I can't fault them for their mindset. And that's, you know, like we talked about earlier, you got to plant that seed to change that mindset. Mm-hmm. Every police interaction is a chance to rebuild negative rapport build continue building great rapport or start rapport where there was none before so that's that's just how i look at it and i try to be you know well i'll ask you this would you like would you want your kids or would you encourage or i don't want to say allow because they'll make their own choices (laughs) but (laughs) would you encourage them for a career in law enforcement Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be above it at all. Again, it's, it's one of those things, you know, like if you want to see a change, be a change, you know? So. And so, yeah, even the more things you do now is even more, you know, that may be that woman you helped her kid, Mm -hmm. maybe the one interacting with your kids on the street one day. Yeah. So Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, we don't always see the immediate changes. It's the same with our mental health, we don't go to a therapist and we're like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> you know, it, it is a continual process that hard work has to be put in every day, whether it's positive, you know, or just not, just truthful self-reflection on ourself or, you know, the, the continual put a smile on, keep a smile on no matter how hard it is. Mm-hmm. Fake it until you make it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's, that's like Jeremy said, that, that seed that has to be planted. Yeah. Well, and I think that's probably, probably part of the problem is one of the things you said of hard work. Cause I mean, I see it and I've had multiple conversations with people about it and I'm not going to say it's a generational thing or whatever, but it seems like doing hard work is not fashionable anymore because it's not it's not an immediate mm-hmm. result yeah. yeah it's not instant gratification yeah. yeah it takes a while i mean look at look at construction jobs right now yeah. my, my son does hvac mm-hmm. he can go anywhere he wants whenever he wants well and imagine because to... nobody's hiring everybody's hiring nobody's gonna be there to work yeah imagine too like you know being adults and having a conflict and like working through that conflict instead of getting the immediate result of killing somebody <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know you're right no one wants to put in work they're like oh <laughs> Yeah. Problem, boom. <laughs> I'll give credit to one person, though. This is like a year ago. You may remember it. There was like a homicide in the city like four years ago. And this dude you became... You one homicide four years no, ago? No, this dude... Be- you don't remember. It was like, this what, dude became... 600 since then? It was, a, it was a double shooting. One dude died, and another one was shot in the back and became a paraplegic from the waist down. <laughs> this, this dude, like, PD's like, hey, who shot you? I'm not telling you. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying shit. Okay, Bye. He waited three years, three years, rented a truck, <laughs> threw his wheelchair in the back of the truck, drove there and shot the guy and killed the guy that shot him. I was like, no, that's hard work. That's dedication. <laughs> like, so damn, he sir. went through all that therapy just to be able to do that. <laughs> just to go to jail for the rest just of his life. Just to go to jail for the rest yeah. of his life. That's not hard work. That's stupidity. That's dedication. Mm-hmm. I'll give him that. Yeah. But yeah, it's... I. And, and the problem is too, especially in this city, we're not seeing like, we're not seeing the person that actually did the offense get shot, apparently because no one in the city can aim worth a damn. Is but, that the truth? And, and I'm not, and I'm not mad about it either. I'm really not. I mean, you will, you'll get sixty shots, and then it's like, where you shot you, at? You I get, got like grazed right here. <laughs> you you hit you broke out the window of the car. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever. But yeah, it's. I, but too, we've also seen those innocent bystanders mm-hmm. that 
yeah, were minding their own damn business. Yep. As someone's running and shooting away yep. over an argument. Why'd you do it? Man, he, he's tripping. He disrespected me. Yeah. Cool. She's dead because of it, so I hope you're happy. Yeah. That kid's dead because of it because I hope you're happy. <laughs> yeah, it drives me up the wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're just, we're there. We're, what, what's interesting about us, like in the fire service, we're there for the 10 minutes, scoop them and go get them to the hospital. You're, you guys are there for hours on end trying to piece it together with people that don't want to piece together. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, another thing that I've noticed too, like on car stops, is notoriously on shootings, you know, like you can usually tell when they're like revenge shootings. If you ask me, you know, like I know who did it, but I'm not telling, you know, I'll wait to get my revenge later. So I, no one saw anything ever. No one ever sees anything. They just hear it. I, I would I know I was outside. I didn't see anything. So I've noticed that like on car stops, people get super angry because they're inconvenienced by being pulled over. Hey, this is why I pulled you over. Uh, there's unsolved murders and you're pulling me over. Uh, yeah. How did you know that <laughs> yeah. me personally, myself, was assigned to 17 homicides in the city, man? Well, like, before I continue with my traffic stop, did you have any info on a unsolved homicide that you would like to give up? Because I, I would love to solve one. Um, but the problem is no one saw anything. But I can't let petty crime go just because not all 40 homicides in the last two weeks haven't been solved. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I remember there was a, in our city we have, you know, like, like every city does, they have this monthly, weekly, whatever weekend, like gatherings, festivals, whatnot. And our city has, you know, about a, a monthly festival and there was a shooting with, and it ended up resulting with a bystander getting killed. And one of the questions that I remember to the police chief was like, well, what can the police do differently? And I remember he said, there was an officer five feet from the guy. Five feet from the guy that was shooting. He's like, if, if, if officer presence doesn't deter things anymore, what would you like? He's like, would you like, I remember he said, would you like a tank? He's like, I can try and find a tank if you'd like me to park a tank on the street. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't work. But he said, I, he said, and he's like, it probably won't work. No. <laughs> he did. I was like, well, that's a good point. I'd like to see a tank. That'd be cool. Yeah, absolutely. I want to drive the tank. Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you do for the police department? Drive the tank. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you do? I'm the tank gunner. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is a job that I want. Dude, those M1s they get up there and do like 65 mile an hour. Yeah. Dude, could you imagine a high speed pursuit with a tank? I mean, well, so awesome. <laughs> so here's would the thing: it, would it, it be wouldn't... high speed though at that point? Ah. Uh, it's 65. There's a couple avenues That's in our city that I think it would be true. And, and here's the thing. You don't have to worry about the roads because they're already crap. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So it's not going to tear it up any worse than it already is. That's true. Well, what's this new thing in the budget for? Well, part of it's for the tank and then the other part's for the road construction after the tank goes through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was it, as funny as it kind of was, it, it was a perfect point. Like, <laughs> if you're not going to abide by the law with us standing right here, like, bro, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, not only did and he do that, he did it next to quite possibly the tallest officer that has, like, the largest wingspan and played D1 college basketball. Like, bro, you're getting tracked down. <laughs> you ain't getting away from that man. <laughs> well, here's the thing that people need to remember is criminals are stupid. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and they don't care about laws. If they cared about laws and being a productive member of society, they wouldn't be a criminal. They wouldn't be a criminal. <laughs> I mean, I was having this conversation the other day with somebody about how, you know, they take more time and put more effort into being a criminal and, you know, like planning crimes or whatever than if they would just go get a job. Yeah. I mean, where, where does that mindset come from? You know, especially with drug dealers and, I mean, things like that. Where Do they watch Scarface one too many times? Did they not see the ending? They only watched the first part? I'll tell you one thing they never did is took a firearms class because they can't shoot. Where's the shit? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny. Our, our jobs, we really are glorified babysitters. You're a glorified babysitter with a gun, oh and gosh, I'm a glorified babysitter that can push medication. I, I laugh all the time. I'm like, I leave my little children at home to come babysit adult children. 
And it's, it's exhausting. Like, come on. Cut. Good grief. How many times do you, like, are you with somebody and they're like, they took my toy or they took this and you just no, literally, see your kids on, on these adult bodies that you're talking to? No, I mean, seriously. I, so I, in three years, I've never been in a fight because I just, that's not how I roll. Um, but I got dispatched to a fight on a bus and I was with my old female partner and as I'm walking along the side of the bus, I see a fist through the bus window just swinging on this guy. And I was like, oh, man, you know. So then I, like, I, I channel the inner mom in me. And it's these two old drunk guys, <laughs> you know, beating each other up over a dollar, you know. And I was like knock it off and then I literally like ripped this guy off of him and this poor like teenage kid is just watching me like go full mom and recording me and I have Millie was like I was like you know come come on I just I don't know yeah I don't get it I've used the dad voice I'm like hey thank you I use the knife hand a lot come on guy (laughs) You're being <laughs> one one time. I, I usually go sideways. That way they know I'm dead serious. Like, all right, play time's over, gentlemen. <laughs> Just a hammered drunk dude in one of our entertainment districts. I was like, hey, you're really being that guy right now. And he's like, I don't want to be that guy. And I'm like, oh, God, what have I done? Was he dressed in the nines? <laughs> no. no. So what, what was it, I'm thinking? He had an affliction t-shirt on, though. No. <laughs> hey. They, they usually are those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 100% sure of the host. time. <laughs> I, I just looked at, I looked at the cop that was standing next to me like, all right, your problem, bye. <laughs> Sorry. I've never been that guy at a bar. I've always <laughs> been the peacemaker. Oh, God. <laughs> but So what would you... Uh, really? Did really? I not carry your brother out of One the time? entertainment district We're not talking he about was that. being a jerk off? He was too drunk. He was. <laughs> But I was a peacemaker. That's, peace the that's why he not. got carried. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he needed to be carried. <laughs> so we actually, were all about to go to jail that night. <laughs> not me. He was sober. Not now. Now you just call a cop a racist and you get out of it. I can't do that. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to see what I can get away with. I expect a phone call from me in about great. a week when I'm like, help. You're I didn't get away with it. Yeah. A lot in Jackson County. New phone. Who dis? You're going to be that guy. <laughs> you are going to be that guy. <laughs> that's so sadly true. Um... Moving forward, you know, what advice w- would you give to your children or even an officer or, or a potential officer coming on? Like, what would you tell them to be ready for? How would you tell them to prepare for this job outside of what the police academy would teach them? You know, I don't know if you can. Uh, you is know, this one of those you got to see it type is, thing? Yeah, 100%. There's nothing that anybody could have told me that would have prepared me for the things that I see, the things that I deal with, the things I think about. There is, there's no amount of preparation. You know, the academy is your basic, here's how you handle things. Um, there is no good. Because also, too, everybody handles things differently, you know, uh, mentally and things like that. But there's no amount of advice that I could have got. I don't think that would have prepared me for this it's, it's kind of a lot like the fire service you know we we go to the academy we have our burn tower and we train and drill in it we, we all know how, how it's set up we're going to take mm-hmm. the hose line when an actual house is on fire and mm-hmm. shit's falling around and there's a couch that wasn't there in the burn <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this yeah. couch wasn't here when we were training sir what yeah. is, what's it doing here now it's but you're right it's it you just got to see it and you got to see it a bunch and every, every situation is, is different. You know, the 17th call to the same house for the same issue, um, there's no guarantee that it will end the same. Yeah. Same with us. The yeah. 20th time we pick up that drunk guy. Mm-hmm. Or the one time you throw him on the monitor, you're like, oh, shit, he's having a heart yeah. attack. <laughs> yeah. ha- ha- happened to me. Yeah, ran, happened ran, to this, me. ran the same guy up over and over and over. I mean, I, you know what I'm talking about now. He, yeah. he ended up passing. He, he got shot in the head at one point. Bullet was still there. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so we found him in the street in the middle of the day. And thinking, oh, he just overdosed again. No big deal. Doing our mm-hmm. thing. All of a sudden, you put him on the monitor. You're like, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, it's <there's laughs> not You do the sick. double take on the monitor. You're like, like, he really messed Whoa. up this time. 
you know, and you're cutting 15 layers off and yep. you're by yourself. <laughs> Just the two of you. Hey, you know, it's funny you bring that up with shootings too. I, I swear to God, every time I see somebody shot in the head, it is one of two things. They are dead. Or they are talking to me, and the bullet's just sitting there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> seems like, seems like hey, I'm pushes. not a paramedic, but I know you don't poke it. <laughs> <laughs> God, help it. It's like the red button. You're just like, oh. <laughs> I don't poke it. You let, let them poke it. Like, I mean, you got shot in the head like right in this area. Here, here. Ow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right, right there. Do that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. We'd absolutely love to have you anytime. You're always more than welcome on the show. So, Jeremy, you got anything? No, you can close it out. Oh, I get to do it this time? Yeah, you get to do it. <laughs> okay. You're going to mess up, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> Jeremy, you got anything to say? <laughs> nope. Come on, man. Just If you need help, talk to someone. I need help. I'm talking to Jeremy. I need help doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one you want helping you? Yeah. yeah. No, sure true. about that? <laughs> Sink or swim, man. <laughs> well, guys, on behalf of Chris, myself, and Jeremy, Ashley, thank you for joining us. This has been the Washdown Podcast. If you guys need help, reach out. We're always here. Contact your friends. Contact your family. Find those resources you need. Thank you. <laughs>